Amen. Praise God. Purihin po ating pinagamamahal na Panginoon. Purihin po ang ating dakilang Diyos. Ang ating dakilang Diyos ang siya magpala sa bawat isa niyo. Praise God. At tayo na mahal ay atulitoy rin po sa mga kawain ng ating dakilang Diyos kung saan tayo darako na po sa pakikinig ng dakilang Ibanghel Kaligtasan. Our beloved brethren, let all stand as we hear the gospel of salvation deliver our beloved Bishop Samuel Smith. Amen. Praise God. I bring you greetings from the United States of America. It's great to be in Maryland, Philippines today. Give the Lord Jesus Christ a great big hand clap. I've been to the Philippines 41 times since 1985, but this is the first time to ever be in Maryland, Philippines. Amen. God bless you. I love and appreciate you very much. Before you're seated, I want to once again acknowledge my friendship with the beloved evangelist, Bildi Estrada Almeida. We've been friends for many, many years, and I give him honor. And also in memory of his late wife, Festora Lena Almeida, and the beloved children and grandchildren. We are happy to be with them, and all of you here, and the ministers, the pastors, the choir, amen. I wish I could bring every one of you to America for the Big World Congress next year. There'll be people there from all over the world. I wish you could come and be with us. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. I want to speak today for a short while. One of my favorite scriptures in the Bible is found in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Can you say amen? That means he has never changed. The God of the Old Testament is the God of the New Testament. He has never changed. He said, my ear is not deafened, my arm is not shortened, that I cannot hear you nor heal you. God hears in America, God hears in Russia, He hears in the Philippines. He is mighty God all over the world. Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. So He's the same. He's never changed. If you want to know what God will do for you, if you want to know what God will do for you, look what He's done before. What He did in the Old Testament brought down the walls of Jericho, made the lion's mouths to be shut, rained down great, great crimes of judgment upon the Philistines. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The God of David, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is your God, the same God that favored the beloved evangelist and his wife and family and the pastors favors you. Nobody's too small. Nobody's too unimportant. God loves you, the children, the teens, every one of you. You're a child of God, and all things are possible to them to believe. Jesus said, I am not going to change. I am Alpha and Omega. I'm going to speak today on the words of Jesus. Remember, Paul said, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. His word does not change. I want to speak about what Jesus said. Remember one time, the Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 24, the disciples came and asked Jesus, what's the sign of the end time? What's the sign of your coming? What's the sign of the last days? We ask the same things today. When will Christ come back? What's the sign of the end time? And Jesus said, remember, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is God that does not change. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God that brought down the walls of Jericho. The God that sent the plagues upon Egypt. The God that opened the Red Sea. The same Jesus said, when you see wars and rumors of wars and pestilences and earthquakes, these are the beginning of sorrows. I ask today, why aren't people awake? I compliment you for being here for hours, but across the world, people are not going to church. They're gambling, they're fornicating, they're drinking, they're worshiping Allah, they're worshiping Buddha, they're praying to Mary, they're not following Jesus Christ. Why? Because the God of this world, not the God, G-O-D, but the little God, Satan, he is the God of sinful mankind. 
That little God, Satan, has deceived people and made them not believe the word of God. But thank God that Jesus' miracle crusade, you believe the word of God. You believe these things are happening for a sign. I asked the people in America, America is backslidden. Pray for America. Across America, people are not going to church. Across America, they preach a, a gospel of prosperity. Across America, they're same-sex marriage. Across America, men say they're women, and women say they're men. It's a bad time. Drugs is everywhere in America. Pray for America. America is now under judgment. It's getting worse and worse because the devil has deceived them. I asked them time ago in America, what will it take to wake you up? Maybe if Russia would begin to growl and invade its neighbor. Maybe if China would begin to flex its muscle and begin to threaten. Maybe if there's a worldwide pandemic and millions of people would die. But that's happened. Russia is moving. China is moving. COVID-19, six million people died around the world and yet the world sleeps. But thank God the JNCI, you're awake because you believe what Jesus said. Thank God. You see, one time Jesus said, time will be no more. What men need today is time. Time to come to Christ. Remember, Nicodemus asked Jesus, what must I do to be saved? Men should be asking Christ what to do to be saved. But they're not. They're eating and drinking and surfeiting, living a life like nothing will ever change. But Jesus Christ is coming. There will be a judgment. One day everybody will stand on the right hand or the left hand. They'll be either sheep or goats. Where will you stand? The prophet Amos said, prepare to meet thy God. Have you prepared to meet God? Today is just another day on the calendar. You may say it's just, just, just October 16th. It's just another day. But it's not just another day. It's not just Sunday. It's not just another day of the week. It is a time to be saved. The Bible says time and chance come to all. You're having a time today to worship. God dwells in the midst of worship and praise. You've heard the word of God go forward. And when God calls you, you must respond to him. But one day time will be no more. And that day everyone will have to stand before Almighty God. Where will you stand? The Bible tells us the lukewarm. That's those that's in between. They're not hot. They're not cold. They're in between. Many Christians today say, I believe in Jesus. But they're not on fire. They're not doing what they should be doing. But they're not cold. They say, Bishop Smith, don't judge me. I'm not cold. I'm not a drunkard. I'm not a fornicator. And they say, but I'm not hot either. They're in between. They're lukewarm. But Jesus said, if you're lukewarm, I will spew you out of my mouth. Don't be lukewarm. Your beloved evangelist, Wilde Almeida, the beloved Bastora, Lena Almeida, they set an example. They were not in between. They were not lukewarm. They were not cold. They were on fire. This church is on fire. After you receive the Holy Ghost, ye shall receive fire. Everybody here, you need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? The Holy Ghost came on the day of Pentecost as a sound of a mighty rushing wind and it filled the house where they were sitting. Today, the choirs have sung. We have preached. We have prayed. We're in the house of God. It would be a shame if somebody left here that was not filled by the Holy Ghost. After you receive the Holy Ghost, ye shall receive power. Power to overcome the world. Power to overcome the devil. Power to overcome the flesh. Everybody will stand before God. Remember, Nicodemus said, what must I do? There's someone here today, you're saying, I want to be saved. I don't want to be cold. I don't want to be lukewarm. I want to be saved. Jesus said, you must be born again. You must become a new creature. All things pass away. All things become new. The first thing that Christ said was, except you repent, you'll all likewise perish. Remember the Bible says, repent. 
in Acts 2.38 and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall receive the Holy Ghost. The promise is to you and your children and all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. But the first thing you must repent. Old Testament prophets said repent. The apostles said repent. And Jesus said repent. Have you repented? It's a serious thing. It goes on Luke chapter 16. The Bible talks about two men. One was named Lazarus, and one was a rich man, and both died. The Bible says it's appointed a man once to die, and after this the judgment. I have an appointment. You have an appointment. It's going to happen someday, but today we've got time. What will you do with this time? Use this time to praise God. Use this time to worship. Use this time to repent. Use this time to be born again of the water and the spirit. He said, you must be born again of the water and the spirit. I ask you today, have you been born again? Have you been baptized in Jesus' name? Have you received the Holy Ghost? There is not an alternative. There's one way to God, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. You do not get saved by praying to Allah. You do not get saved by confessing to Mary. You do not get saved by praying to Buddha. You are saved when you come to Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the door. I am the door, he said. If anybody would enter any other way, he's a thief and a robber. Have you come through Jesus? I call today to you. Come to Jesus. Jesus says, come unto me, and I will give you life eternal. There was two men in Luke chapter 16, and both died. Everybody dies sometime. Lazarus died. He was saved. And when this saved man died, angels came and took him to paradise. But when the rich man died, who was a sinner, he went to hell. Yes, there was a hell. The Bible speaks about hell. Jesus spoke about heaven, but every time he spoke about heaven, he spoke ten times about hell. The Bible talks about hell fire. The Bible speaks in Revelation about the lake of fire, the foam with brimstone, and the worm dieth not, and the smoke ascends forever and ever. It's a terrible thing to go to hell. God, give us the fear of God. God, give us something to wake us up. If you're not saved, if you've not repented, if you've not been baptized in Jesus' name, if you've not received the Holy Ghost, if you've not received that power, if you're lukewarm, you are going to be lost. Jesus Christ came to seek and to save that which was lost. He did not come to build great buildings. The Catholics have got great buildings all over the world. The Muslims have got great mosques all over the world. But God's not there. God came to seek and to save that which was lost. He came for you to save you so you won't go to hell. The rich man in hell, in torments, in flames, he cried out, I'm in torment, I'm in flames. Send Lazarus, that man that's in paradise, that man that's saved. Send him that he can come and put water on my tongue. Notice something, this man was rich. He had millions of pesos. He had servants. He lived in the mansion. But in hell, he only wanted one thing. He wanted water. He wanted relief. Hear me today, you may drink, you may smoke, you may fornicate, you may shake your fist in God's face, say, I'm not ready, I'll live my life like I want to. But one day, every knee will bow. One day, every tongue will confess. One day, you'll need Jesus. He said, would you let Lazarus come? And Jesus said to him, there's a great gulf fixed between you and him. You see, there is no purgatory. There's no in-between place. There is heaven and there's hell. And if someone goes to hell, they cannot go to heaven. No way. The Bible says at the judgment, the wicked shall be wicked still. And the filthy shall be filthy still. But the righteous shall be righteous still. And the holy shall be holy still. If you live holy, you'll be holy. If you live righteous, you'll be righteous. If you live wicked, if you live filthy, if you drink and lie and steal and fornicate and gay and don't disobey God, when you die, you go to hell. But the rich man said, is there hope for me? Maybe Lazarus can come and help me. But the voice said, you cannot. The voice said, remember, 
when you had a chance. Remember when you had a chance. I prophesy to you today. Look at Bishop Smith. I prophesy to you. If you don't come to Christ, if you walk out of here unsaved, if you leave this place and go to hell, one day, you remember this day when Bishop Smith stood in front of you. You remember he called you. Remember what he preached. Remember God gave you a chance. In hell, in hell there is no water. In hell there is no hope. In hell there is no friends. In hell there is no escape. But there's one thing in hell. Memory. Memory. You'll remember the beloved evangelist, Ivana. Remember the beloved pastora, Lena. Remember the JMCI. Remember the Maryland Church. Remember Bishop Smith preaching, the choir singing. You remember, oh, I could have come to Christ. I could have given my life to Jesus. This is the day of salvation. Have you come to Christ? You must be born again. And the rich man realized he was lost. No hope. He said, if I can't be saved, if it's too late for me, I have five brethren who have not yet died. Send someone to them. Send someone back from the dead to warn them about this place. And the voice said, if they would not believe Moses the prophets, they would not believe one back from the dead. What are you waiting on? Are you waiting on some angel to come? Are you waiting for someone, a dream? Are you waiting for some sky writing before you come? The voice said, your brethren have got Moses and the prophets. Today, you've got Moses and the prophets. You got the Old Testament. You got the New Testament. You got Moses. You got the prophets. You got Jesus. You got the apostles. You got the church. You got the blood of Jesus. You got the name of Jesus. You got the Holy Ghost. What hinders you? This is the day of revival. This is the time to come to Christ. Whether it's Russia, whether it's America, whether it's Africa, whether it's Europe, whether it's Asia, all men must come through one way. Jesus Christ is the way. In the 22nd chapter of Revelation, in the last book in Revelation, that book that's called the Revelation of Jesus Christ, that book that reveals Christ to the world, what he was, what he is, what he will be, the first and the last, the Alpha and Omega. In the last chapter, three times, Jesus says, I come quickly. I come quickly. One day, the trump of God will sound. One day, the shout of archangel will ring. One day, the graves will open. One day, the dreaded Christ shall rise first. One day, the alarm Christ shall be called up to meet him in the clouds of glory. What a day! One day! He's promised us a place. He said, in my Father's house are many mansions. Think about it. In his Father's house are many mansions. Many of us are poor. We have a small place. We don't have a car. We don't have money. But thank God, one day, you've got a promise of heaven. The Bible says, in streets of gold, walls of jasper, gates of pearl, no death there, no pain there, no cancer there, no disease there, no COVID there, no war there. Heaven, heaven, heaven. You may be poor in this world. You may be like Lazarus. Lazarus was poor. He was so poor, he laid at the rich man's gate and begged for bread. He was so poor, he could not pay for a doctor. And the dogs licked his sores. But he was saved. And that's the important thing. Because he was saved, he died, went to paradise, and will live forever and ever and ever. But the rich man, the Bible said he fared sumptuously. He had purple, he had gold, he had silver, he had servants. His life was over. And forever, and forever, and forever, and forever, he'll be in hell. Today, life is short. A few short years. Prepare to meet God. Thank God for JMCI. What you're doing, you're preparing people in Maryland, in Manila, in Antipolo, across the provinces, all over Asia, all over America, telling people, get ready, get ready, live for God. Jesus is coming. So Lazarus was poor here. His life was short, and he went to paradise. The rich man was rich here. 
His life was short, and he went to hell. He said, send Lazarus to put water on my tongue. No water. If you're lost, if you leave this place, if you don't repent, if you're not born again, here, Bishop Smith, get you a good bottle of water and drink it and enjoy it. Because if you die, if Christ comes back, that's the last water you'll get. In hell, the Bible says he was tormented. And when he realized he couldn't be helped, he said, go back to my brethren. But the voice said to him, no thing can help them except the word of God. Today, you've got the word of God. Today, I'm standing before you telling you, repent, be baptized, receive the Holy Ghost, prepare to meet thy God. He said, I come quickly. One day, Christ will come quickly. The Bible says that that day, he'll say, enter into the joy of the Lord or depart from me. I know you're not. Where will you be? Ask yourself the question, if Christ would come back today, if I would die today, where would I stand before Almighty God? Three times in Revelation 22, he's, I come quickly. I come quickly. He comes another way too. He looks at the date book. He looks at the day and says to the death angel, come, it's their time. The Bible says it's appointed a man wants to die and after this the judgment. When your appointment comes, he will send the death angel and come to you and say, now this day I demand an account. If Christ would call you today and say, you must give an account, are you prepared to meet him? These are the words of Jesus Christ. He said, prepare to meet your God. He said, you must be born again. He said, I'm coming quickly. He said, he said, when you see these things come to pass, look up your redemption wrought nigh. I do not know of any Bible prophecy that needs to be fulfilled that has not yet been fulfilled. We are living in the last days, the beginning of sorrows. Christ coming is soon. I pray for you here at the JMCI. And you pray for me that in America and around the world, there'll be revival. There'll be soul saved. Would you stand, please? Would you stand? Would you bow your heads? As beloved brother Edwin comes, I want to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for as a sinner here. Don't let them leave lost. Lord, convict them. Stir their hearts. Draw them. Don't let them be lost. Father, I pray for the lukewarm. Those who are not hot. Those who are not cold, those who are in between, who think they're saved, but you said you would spit them out of your mouth. Oh, God, wake us up. You want to wake us up. Stir us, dear Lord. You told the Apostle Paul to stir up the gift within him. God, we stir up the gift within us. Lord, take us to the next dimension. Show us things we need to know. Talk to our hearts. Bring us closer to you. I thank you for this church in Maryland. I thank you for the Jesus Miracle Crusade International. Now, Lord God, give them blessings. Bless the family. Bless the children and grandchildren. Bless the staff. Bless the members. Lord, throughout the Philippines, the revival fire fall. Oh, God, this church preaches the what Jesus said. We preach you're coming back. We preach men must be born again. We preach men must be baptized. We preach men must repent. Lord, I thank you for your truth. Lord, forgive those who have sinned. Father, in the name of Jesus, forgive sins. Ask him to forgive you right now. Just talk to the Lord Jesus Christ. Ask him to forgive you. Beloved Edwin, would you come please? Glory. Let me pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, don't let one soul leave here lost. Cause every sinner to repent. Cause every sinner to ask for forgiveness. 
sinner, ask God to forgive you. Lukewarm, stir up the gift within you. Let's get ready to meet Christ. Christ said, I am coming quickly. He may send the death angel for you. Are you prepared? Or he may come with the sky today. Are you prepared? The most important thing we ever do is prepare to meet God. Hallelujah. Puri na natitikilan Diyos sa